The following is a presentation of the Championship Racing Network. Crossed Flags, a racing podcast. It's your midweek fix for racing news and information. Brought to you by the Championship Racing Network. Now let's head trackside to join your host, Steve West and Matt Nicholson. Welcome to this edition of Crossed Flags, episode number 16. Delayed a week. <laughs> circumstances beyond our control mine matt's producer molly's sorry we just could not be able to uh, we couldn't get in ac- access to the studio on wednesday our normal day thursday was well thursday was a big day here in birmingham because we had major league baseball here in town and of course our main station jocks was out there all day long so not available on friday well friday is just it's friday so we said, okay, we'll just uh, have to delay a week. So we thank you very much for coming back around. We do appreciate it. Hope you've had a fantastic weekend. And we're going to get into a whole lot of racing talk here. And uh, we're not going to deal with the rumors, okay? There are people out there who are saying, oh, we know, but we think. Well, it's unconfirmed, but we've learned. It's tentatively this, yeah. tentatively that. Just shut up. Yeah, we're going to wait. Uh, with all the speculation that's out there about the 2025 NASCAR schedule, we're going to wait until it's actually released. And that way we'll know. We've dealt with one schedule because, well, there were just so many holes in it, we couldn't help but drive the Mack truck through it. That was it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so let's uh, get into it here and let's talk about uh, really two very big stories that happened over the last few days. And yeah, we're going to talk about what happened to John Force. But first things first, we've been kind of wondering this. What was going to happen to the drivers at Stuart Haas Racing? And we have talked about it both on this particular podcast and on our two-hour weekend show. Because if you think about it, four Cup Series drivers and two Xfinity Series drivers, and the two Xfinity Series drivers, certainly one of them is definitely Cup Series ready. The other one arguably is. You could say that. Okay. So that means you got four, technically six drivers who are Cup Series ready. Well, Gene Haas, yeah, he's going to keep one of the Cup Series charters. He's going to keep the two Xfinity Series teams. He's going to have to do a lot of negotiating to keep any of those drivers and put them in the Xfinity Series cars, number one. Number two, now we know that one of those drivers is off the market. And it is kind of interesting to see how things change. Okay, Uh, when I kind of started to get back into NASCAR in the 90s, I was still a Daryl Waltrip fan. DW was my guy. He had been since the late 1970s. But as I kind of I kind of drifted away from it in the 80s a little bit, I would check in it on every once in a while, but then kind of drift away and then come back and then drift away. Well, when I got back into it seriously in the 90s, I realized DW is going to retire here in the next few years. So I need to start thinking about who my next driver is going to be. And I got real serious about it in 1999 when I happened to watch one of my favorite races at one of my favorite tracks, which was Richmond. And a kid by the name of Tony Stewart grabbed the win that evening. And when I found out that Tony Stewart drove for Joe Gibbs, who I'd had the chance to meet after his last Super Bowl win with the Washington Redskins, yeah, I'm going to be politically incorrect on that. Um, I thought, I can deal with that. So I started following Tony Stewart. Well, I followed Tony when he left Joe Gibbs Racing to join Gene Haas and create their own team. Well, who the heck am I going to follow now? All of a sudden, we get news this week of Chase Briscoe. Chase Briscoe is going to leave Stewart Haas Racing at the end of the year, and he is going to Joe Gibbs Racing. He's going to take over the number 19 car for the soon-to-retire, at the end of the year anyway, Martin Truex Jr. This is going to be a fantastic car for Chase Briscoe. And sorry if this sounds like disrespect to the driver that I'm a true fan of for Tony Stewart and Gene Haas. But let's face it. What we have seen out of the 14 car over the last two, three years is not necessarily Chase Briscoe's fault. This is the fault of some neglect truth be told that is true and then you go in and you get this kid right here who's going to go into again arguably one of the best cars he is ever going to have the chance to get behind the wheel of i would suspect that the one win that chase briscoe currently has will start to become more and then he may actually start to become a legitimate title contender. I mean, getting into the playoffs is one thing. Getting to the point where you start advancing into the point of the round of 12, round of 8, and then round of 4, 
where you're actually one of the four guys who's battling right. for the title. Right. That's something different. And Chase Briscoe needs to progress on that. I mean, he's only got, what, 125-ish starts to his credit going into this weekend. Give or take, yeah. So that right there tells me that he's still got some growth to do. He's still got some progressing to do. And it may happen faster than what we know. Because I, I can easily tell you this. Having followed Joe Gibbs Racing all the way back to when they debuted and jumped up and surprised everybody winning a Daytona 500... Joe Gibbs knows how to build a really good team that is going to win and give the drivers the support they need. And the drivers are, in a lot of ways, their own support system, too. It, it really is because you can think back to when Tony Stewart partnered up with Gene Haas in 2009. The one thing that he, he stressed and he elaborated on really, really hard was it's all about the people you build around you mm -hmm. that make your organization. Look what Stuart Haas evolved into. Now they're in their fall from grace. Yeah, let's I mean, word it that way. We we all went through. We went through on the two hour show kind of the history of it and how Gene Haas started his Haas CNC racing team in two thousand two, but he didn't even sniff Cup Series victory lane until Tony Stewart came in. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't even he wasn't even in the same zip code. It looked just like he said, but. You look at it now with Briscoe getting pulled over to JGR. I forgot exactly who it was that said this yesterday when the announcement was finally official, that this has another potential to be a Martin Truex-style scenario, and here's what I mean by that. When Truex came into JGR, he only had a handful of wins. I think it was like six total. Now he's at 35. 34, 35. Look how many races he won with JGR alone and how he developed and how he emerged into a consistent title contender year after year after year after year after year. He's got some of the same characteristics of this right here. He's got multiple Xfinity wins. He's got the one cup series win at Phoenix. So this could be another one of those scenarios. And if you look right there at that logo on his polo right there, beside the Toyota logo, that's probably the biggest piece of the puzzle for me is Bass Pro Stop yeah. staying with him and going to back him for the majority of the year. Well, and, and let's look at it this way as well. If you watch, and you can go onto YouTube, Joe Gibbs Racing actually has a YouTube channel. Go on there and find the press conference that they did yesterday. And they did a really, really cool job. Uh, Christopher Bell gets up there, and we made a lot of fun over the fact that last Friday when he arrived at New Hampshire, he kind of let it slip that Chase was coming into the car in, in 2025. Yeah, he didn't give the last name, but we all we knew because, you know, there's two Chases in the Cup Series. Chase, Chase Elliott He's is not leaving Hendrick. on a long-term contract with yeah. Hendrick Motorsports. He's not leaving that. Is he pulling up Chase Purdy out of the lower levels? No, probably mm. not, because if you think about it, again, we know a whole lot about the Stuart Haas racing breakup. Yeah, plus we know that Christopher Bell and Chase Briscoe have a really close relationship. They're really, really good friends. So it just made sense to connect the dots. But we said, okay, we'll wait until it becomes official. And, of course, Tuesday is when it did. Well, who's the guy that starts off the press conference? It's Christopher Bell. They did a really cool job. But then the next thing was is that even before starting to talk to Chase Briscoe, Joe Gibbs says, we want to take the time to talk. And who should call in by phone? Johnny Morris, the man of the family that founded Bass Pro Shops. And that goes a long way towards understanding the kind of relationship that Joe Gibbs Racing as a whole has with their major sponsors. It doesn't matter whether it's Bass Pro Shops or whether it is interstate batteries interstate batteries which has been with them since the beginning it could be fedex which has been on denny hamlin's car since he stepped into it really even before that since the 11 car came into existence Reasers, and there are others owners. that we can go through exactly yep. so what joe gibbs has built over there is legitimately whether or not you like it or whether or you don't and for whatever reason you may not or may like it Here's the thing. Joe Gibbs Racing is a legitimate title contending monster, just like Hendrick Motorsports is. 
This also tells me, and this is kind of the bad side of it, and this is where I kind of hate to go through this because, again, I said flat out at the beginning, I'm a Tony Stewart fan. But something in the relationship went really, really bad south between Haas and Stewart for this to happen. And yeah. we, we may never know what it was, what happened, but somewhere down the line, those two, which got along so well in 2009 – and figured out the way to make Tony Stewart the first driver owner since Alan Kowicki to win a Cup Series title. Then they go out and they get Kevin Harvick, and he has the people surrounding him that wins the title in his first year with that team in 2014. And they're going out there and they're expanding out, and they get Kurt Busch, and they get these drivers. And when Tony's ready to go, he gets Clint Boyer. But somewhere down the line, it started to go south. And I think part of this and part of what has somewhat disillusioned Tony Stewart, at least, began when he wanted to grab Kyle Larson. Because if there's one driver who has the ultimate in respect for Kyle Larson, it's Tony Stewart. Mm -hmm. Because they're kind of two peas in a pod. Tony sees a lot of himself in Kyle Larson, as in this is a kid who can get into any kind of car at any particular point in time and be a threat to win the race, no matter what it is. He's done it in dirt. He's done it in NASCAR. Heck, he was pretty good at the Indy 500 just a couple of months ago, you might remember. So I think Ford nixing him being able to sign Kyle Larson was nail number one. And I found out this morning it got slipped out that Tony wanted to sign Kyle Busch when Kyle was a pending free agent, yep, what was that two years ago now? Yes, it was let known that he was pending to be a free agent after the 2022 season. He was losing the Eminem sponsorship, and Joe Gibbs seemed to be fairly willing to let him go. Again, we don't know the behind this behind the scenes machinations of that, but it certainly didn't seem like Joe Gibbs was running real hard to try and keep Kyle Busch. Kyle goes off to Richard Childress Racing, and we thought, okay, that's a great move. Very few people knew that Tony Stewart was a guy who was really itching to go get Kyle Busch. And if you can imagine the Stewart Haas Racing Team with Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch, and then Chase Briscoe and whoever might be in yeah. whatever the fourth car would be, that's a pretty stout organization, at least driver lineup wise. I know what you're talking about because the person that let it slip had a good ping on what was going on within that organization, Kevin Harvick. Mm -hmm. He's the one that said he was going after Kyle Busch. Huh? Yeah. So Where'd that come from? You stop and think about that. At least for for one year, Kevin Harvick, 2023, Kevin Harvick in the four car, Chase Briscoe probably in the 14. And then you got Kyle Larson and Kyle Busch in the 41 and the 10, however you wish to put them in there. But this time, from what we are told, it wasn't Ford nixing Kyle Busch. It was Gene Haas. That was probably the nail in the coffin. With Ford nixing Kyle Larson when they did, that was probably the start of the nail and the first two licks on the head of the nail. Sure. And then losing the Ford support, knowing the Ford support was going away after 2025, all but going away, there was a couple other licks on the nail. And then when you find out Gene Haas nixes Kyle Busch and wanting to sign him, there you go. So, yeah, that's kind of what we think. He was probably like, "Mm, I'm done. (laughs) Is that some speculation on our part? Yeah, but, you know, this is that thing of if you can put all – if you can look at this from the 30,000-foot level and you start connecting all the little dots that are there, it certainly seems to make a lot of sense. And, and two, they they had their little – they had their riff as well with the deal when – between Cole Custer and Ryan Priest. Sure. Gene wanted Cole. Tony wanted Ryan. Tony ultimately ended up winning with putting Ryan in the car, which we see what's happened with that, Yeah. unfortunately. But here's the thing. I'm not necessarily certain that that's a Ryan Priest-Cole Custer thing. I don't know if Cole would be doing any better in the 41 car right now. I don't – I'm not so sure either. Truth be told, I honestly kind of believe the move back down to Xfinity for Cole got him 
got him back on his feet and got his confidence back up. And I think he's much better prepared to go to cup now. If he chooses to do so, this may be another Justin Allgaier situation. It's potential. We'll see. So Time will tell. Time will tell for sure. But yeah, this, this whole Stuart Haas racing soap opera, we continue to keep finding out more and more about it. And as we learn more, and we'll let you know. And Kevin did let it know this too. Kevin did let it slip that it was all set, all but set. Front row was going to move into the Stuart Haas shop. Yeah. Have expanded. And then next thing you know, Gene comes up, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep a team and two Xfinity cars. Yep. Where did that come from? <laughs> well, and, and one other note on Chase Briscoe here. <laughs> Apparently, when everything kind of started to come down, Wood Brothers was real hot on the trail of trying to get Chase Briscoe to come over to the 21 car, which tells you, number one, that Harrison Burton's on a very, very hot seat. Torch hot. Yeah, and, and probably will be out of it at the end of the year. And then the friendship with Christopher Bell apparently is what got this going here. So Chase finds out about the Stuart Haas deal. He starts talking. He gets a hold of Tony. This is the timeline that I heard earlier on today. I did too. He gets a hold of Tony on a Tuesday, asks Tony, hey, what's our situation? Can we start looking? And Tony gives him the green light. Yeah, you can start looking. Go look right now. Thursday, he gets a call from Christopher Bell who says, hey, probably ought to get in touch with the coach because I'm hearing something about Martin Truex Jr., So he gets in touch with Joe Gibbs, and he and Joe Gibbs start talking, and they actually have a face-to-face meeting to the point where Joe Gibbs is so enamored of Chase Briscoe that he's called him every day since. And by the next Tuesday, he was signed. It was between the Tuesday that Stuart Haas announced there was closing to the following Tuesday, a seven-day time period. Or five business days, however you want to call it. They came to terms on a deal. Came to terms on a deal, and it was there was him, Joe Gibbs, and Dave Alpern met for breakfast on a Thursday morning, and basically the deal was signed by that next Tuesday. Yeah, that's how fast that happened. Mm-hmm. It's very cool. Congratulations to Chase. I've been thinking about trying to figure out who I was going to go with in the future with no Tony Stewart to root for. I might go back to Joe Gibbs. Just saying. Kind of like the kid. I really like Chase Briscoe a lot. Uh, unfortunately, we also heard about a bad situation here, and we're going to show you a picture here of what happened at uh, Virginia Raceway Park over this past weekend. The legend John Force, the man who has won more funny car events, in, well, truth be told, more events at the top levels of the NHRA than any, any other driver could by a good 50 event wins. He goes through qualifying and everything, and he gets into the final round. And in his final round, he is able to claim the win in his match. But that happened as he hit the start-finish line. The engine exploded. And if you know anything about funny cars, you know where the engine sits, and you know where the driver sits. It's kind of like being in your own car and watching your engine do that. You're sitting right behind it. Yeah. So he lost control, hit first as he's going down the, the, uh, down the track. He first hits the closest guard wall to him, bounces off of it, crosses over the center line, slams into the other one. Safety crew gets there, and, and I will say this. NHRA, NASCAR, IndyCar, Formula One, the safety car teams at – All of these major series events are fantastic men and women. They really are. They're on it. Got the fire put out. Got John Force pulled out. Sent him to the equivalent of NASCAR's infield care center. The NHRA medical team looked him over. Were concerned about him, obviously enough, and said, "We're gonna we're gonna call in the helicopter." And they sent him on a flight to a trauma center near Richmond, Virginia, which is fairly close to where Virginia Raceway Park is. And he remained as of yesterday in the ICU. And I haven't heard anything as of today, so I'm going to assume there's no difference. Still there, yeah. And they've released a statement as of yesterday, which we're going to show you on the screen. But we're also going to read to you at least part of it. Uh, Drag racing champion John Force remained in intensive care unit at Virginia Hospital. They didn't state which one, by the way. 
Monday following a ca- catastrophic engine failure that sent his funny car slamming into a concrete guard wall at 302 miles per hour during the first round of the Sunday's NHRA Virginia Nationals. After NHRA safety safari personnel extricated and stabilized the 16-time champion, he was transported by medical helicopter to a trauma hospital where he was still being observed and evaluated on Monday. Force's daughter, Brittany, two-time world champion, was joined at the hospital by her mother, Lori, and sisters, Adria, Ashley, and Courtney. The family will maintain a presence while the team competes this weekend at Norwalk, Ohio. Updates on the 157-time tour winner's condition will be released at the discretion of the medical staff. So we are in wait-and-see mode when it comes to John Force. But our hearts, our thoughts and our prayers and our hearts are with him and with the entire Force family. Uh, word is he's alert. He was alert as they were getting him out of the car. Yeah, he, he, underst- got out, he got out of the car under his own power. Yeah, he understood exactly what had happened and probably knew that at least – uh, being thoroughly checked out by a doctor might not be a, such a bad deal. Yeah. The way the crash looked and how everything transpired from start to finish, I would be willing to bet. I'm not speculating. I'm not saying that it is this or not, whatever. Well, be willing to bet maybe a speculation, but I'm not saying that it is this. He's probably being looked at for a very severe concussion. Oh, I would imagine. Because, you slam into a concrete wall at 300 miles an hour. That's a big G-force, man. And yeah, and then you have then you have the reverberations of the engine right in front of you, and then you can see right here where a, a funny car you're sitting in the cockpit of it, versus the where the back of the engine sits is from here where I'm at to probably right here. Mm-hmm. The only thing separating you within that funny car cockpit is a piece of carbon fiber that is within the body to help help with i guess you could say compressions and and forces probably about that wide so when the blower grenades like it does and causes the entire engine to grenade that's a pretty incredible thrust coming back on you and plus you're hitting the wall at 300 miles an hour not on one side but the other side as well so yeah i would be willing to bet he's being looked at for a pretty severe concussion yeah which is understandable and this is a guy who's currently second in funny car points mm-hmm. behind his fellow driver, Austin Prock. Um, and, and we talked about it here on this podcast, and we've talked about it on the two-hour weekend show, that he uh, he's set to retire. He hasn't given an exact date here. I don't think he wants to go out like this. No, 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 no. You know, it'd be one thing if the doctor looked at him and said, yeah, this is a career-ending injury. I don't think it is. Now, he's in his mid-70s, okay? Do we know for certain? No, I'm not a medical person. I don't play one on the radio, and I'm certainly not going to play one on the podcast. I mean, heck, if I were, I wouldn't look like I just went a couple of rounds with Mike Tyson, okay? I mean, this is something that I had to deal with (laughs) Monday and Tuesday of this week on my own. That's another story for another time. So, no, I'm not a medical expert by any stretch of the imagination. But if the doctors clear him to race... John Force will be back because there's no athlete that wants to go out on an injury like this. I'm old enough to remember having watched the Joe Theismann injury that ended his career on Monday Night Football because of what Lawrence Taylor did. Not necessar- not out of any sort of malice. It was a football play, but it broke Joe Theismann's leg and it did so so severely that it ended Joe Theismann's NFL football career. Joe Theismann will tell you to this day he didn't want his career to end that way, but he understood that that was reality at that particular time based upon the medicine of that time. Well, now you're 30, 40 years after the fact, and it has certainly come a long way. Yeah, we've heard the warning stories about a Kurt Busch who still is having some of the effects of a concussion that he suffered not last year, but two years ago. Dale Earnhardt Jr. will tell you that the concussions that he suffered throughout the course of his time behind the wheel caused him to say, you know what, I need to be with my wife and I need to be with my children. I'm going to step away from this on a full-time basis. It's in the back of his head that during his one or two starts in a year, yeah, it could happen again, but he's not going out there and doing it for 36, 38 races a year. Right. 
Right. This is something that is a possibility if you get into any kind of professional sports whatsoever. And if you get into motorsports, yeah, there's a possibility of some really bad things happening. But that's not that that shouldn't be right here if you're a racer. Because if it's right here when you're a racer, you don't need to be in a car, whatever car it is. If you yeah, exactly. And the person that told me that during through my driving career it was actually two individuals, and these names are actually recognizable. David Strimmy. David Gillen. I'm sure you've heard of those names. <laughs> of all places at Talladega Short Track, casual conversation. Both of them said the same thing. If you have one ounce of fear of going out on the racetrack, you do not need to kick your right leg over that door threshold. You do not need to do it because you have no business being out there if you have any ounce of fear. Because fear could cause not only you to get injured, but another competitor to get injured if your fear causes you to make a mistake and you put somebody else in danger. Yeah. And that could not be more true. Yeah. So, again, our thoughts and our prayers go out to John Force and the entire family. We certainly hope him that he has a very, very rapid fire recovery. But, you know, listen to the doctors. Trust me. I know. Uh, one more note here. Speaking of medical situations, I guess sort of. <laughs> well, true. You could call it that. Yeah. Uh, congratulations out to Tony Stewart and Leah Pruitt. Tony, of course, has taken over the top fuel ride that Leah Pruitt at one point in time, like last year, was driving for Tony Stewart Racing. And they announced at the beginning of the year that they were going to try and start a family. And because of that, they didn't want all of the extra stress put on Leah's body. And let's face it, it's a top fuel ride. These things go 330 miles an hour within the span of three seconds. Okay? That's a lot of stress. A lot. So they said, well, let's pull her out of the car. Who are we going to get to put in the car? Well, apparently everybody on Leah Pruitt's crew said, why don't we go get Tony? So they put Tony in the car. Tony, by the way, is sitting ninth in top fuel points. Not bad for day, you know, year one, number one when he had no literal experience in a nitro top fuel and only had the experience from last year in a top fuel dragster of any kind, which was an alcohol one, which is about what? Mm, 50 to 60 miles an hour slower. Yeah. Give or take. And does the trip from light to light in what? Five seconds as opposed to three ish. Yeah. Ish. It's experience, yes. He finished second in the points, yes. All good things. So, yeah, the car's in pretty good hands, and he seems to be doing pretty good with it. Again, ninth in top fuel points going into this coming weekend. Well, they announced they're pregnant. That didn't take long. No, it did not. Congratulations to them. And I love the way that they do this, because we're going to showing it to you right here. They made it look like a movie poster. I mean, if you look at it, directed by Leah Pruitt, produced by Anthony Stewart. <laughs> that's, a, that's a funny way to put it. That's fantastic. Great, great sense of humor, great way of doing it, and uh, love the fact that they are getting to be able to start the family that they want. So sometime in November, Tony did let it know it's going to be a boy. They haven't said what, if any, names they've decided upon. So I don't know. Could we get another Anthony Stewart? I heard Matthew's a good name. <laughs> So I've heard. <laughs> Just saying. Congratulations, Tony. Congratulations, Leah. And, and don't listen to the idiots on Twix or whatever social media you're on. I happen to see one of them sit there and say, hey, Tony, you're going to be like 70 when your kid's grown up. What do you care? If Tony's willing to be a parent at 70, 75, that's no business of yours. Nope. And I'm, I'm pretty... Solid and saying Anthony and Leah are probably going to be really good parents because they seem very supportive of each other first and foremost. And now you'd be able to put a kid in a situation? Oh, heck yeah. They'll be all over that kid. They'll Absolutely. be doting on that kid with no doubts. So congratulations to them. Our best wishes to John Forrest. Congratulations to Chase Briscoe. And, wow, we've come to the end of another podcast. Again, thank you very much for sticking with us through an off week that was unexpected by us. What we do know is this. Next week... We're planning on being here, and we'll also have the two-hour show on Saturday. So hope you join us then, and until then, make sure that you are subscribed to this particular podcast channel. If you haven't already, please do. That way you get the notifications of when this next podcast will drop. 
And we will talk to you again Saturday and next week right here on Cross Flags. You've been listening to Crossed Flags, a racing podcast. For more content like this, subscribe to CRN Live on YouTube, and you'll be set to catch the two-hour live show every Saturday morning at 9 Eastern, 8 Central. This has been a presentation of the Championship Racing Network.